Well, this week, hundreds of foreign nationals escaped Gaza into Egypt, among them nearly 100 Ukrainians, according to President Zelensky, fleeing yet another war. But as the world's attention remains firmly on the Middle East, the conflict in Ukraine grinds on. President Zelensky appeared on U.S. television on Sunday to try and keep his country's fight in the mind of American people. I think that the next year with the challenges, because this is the year of your elections, uh, now again we see the uh, critical situation in the Middle East. So I think uh, the, your help is very important for the next year, and that is crucial. Our next guest says Ukrainians shouldn't have to compete for the world's attention. Sasha Dovzik is the editor of the London Ukrainian Review, and she is joining me now live. Sasha, welcome to the program. As we noted, you are a Ukrainian writer, and you spend uh, a lot of time in London, but you are planning to move back to Ukraine at the end of the year. Uh, you were just there in, in Kyiv, in Lviv. Tell us what you're seeing there, um, since it, it's right to point out so much of the world's attention has shifted to the Middle East. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I indeed was in Ukraine just at the end of October, and what I saw there was basically what I have been seeing through the entirety of Russia's full-scale invasion, incredible defiance, incredible resistance of the Ukrainian people. Um, almost all my classmates are on the front now, uh, and half of them have already been wounded. Um, they recovered and they returned to the front lines to fight against Russia's genocidal onslaught on Ukraine. Ukrainian civilians continue helping in whatever way they can, uh, be it weaving camouflage nets for the army, uh, donating to support their defenders, or keeping their story in the spotlight of international news. Um, all of these efforts are absolutely um, inevitable in our case because uh, we are fighting an existential war, which means we do not have a choice not to fight. Um, if we stop fighting, there will be no more us. So it's quite easy to continue in our case if we, can, if we, if we want to continue to exist. And that's led you to write a, a very compelling piece in The New York Times. I want to read some of it for our viewers. You write, for 20 months, I have been churning out essays on why the world should stay focused on Ukraine. I have written them in a bomb shelter in Lviv, in a train packed with refugees in Poland. I refuse to compete for attention. Obviously, what happened on October 7th in, in Israel shocked the world, and the subsequent war has continued to shock. Are you surprised, though, that there isn't enough space to cover two very significant wars? Um, I'm not surprised we are at a critical point in our history, perhaps in this century. Um, we have not experienced um, international crisis at such a scale. So uh, perhaps it is inevitable that uh, we sometimes feel confused or tired. Um, but uh, I think it is very important uh, for us to keep our focus sharp, because if we lose um, our focus, it means that we lose on all fronts. If we allow Ukraine to slide down the scale of our attention. It means that we are letting down the people who represent a democracy. There is uh, no doubt anywhere in the world that Ukraine is a democracy. Um, we're letting them down. We uh, show the world that democracies are not our priority. And we send a clear signal to authoritarians around the world that democracies can be attacked. It means that by staying with Ukraine, and keeping our attention on Ukraine, although there are other horrible conflicts exploding around the world. Um, it means that we will make the world a safer place if we continue supporting the people who are resisting a truly atrocious genocidal onslaught coming from an authoritarian regime. We see President Zelensky really uh, having a pulse on the current environment right now in the U.S., but around the world, obviously, with so much attention on the Middle East. But let's be honest, even before October 7th, there had been some frustration 
in the U.S., specifically amongst the Republican Party, about continued support for Ukraine and this war and how long that could go on. We very well may see a government shutdown next week because President Biden is asking for funding for both the war in Ukraine and helping Israel. And Republicans at this point seem to only be agreeing on the Israel aspect of this. Explain to our viewers how this is being received in Ukraine and the impact it may be having on troop morale overall. Yes, of course. Uh, we are incredibly grateful for the support that we are receiving. And we rely on this continued support to continue our fight. Um, winter is coming in Ukraine. Uh, it means that Russia will uh, again try to attack Ukrainian energy infrastructure. Um, and we must boost our air defense in order for Ukrainian civilians not to suffer the scale of blackouts that they suffered um, the last year. Um, we are indeed uh, truly appreciative of the support that we are receiving from the U.S., but we also understand that we are the ones who are actually fighting this war on the ground. We are the ones who are sacrificing um, our health, our lives, um, and basically the time that could be invested into uh, building our culture, um, developing our infrastructure, um, protecting our environment. We are losing this time to the battle against Russia's invasion, which threatens not only us, it threatens um, other countries in the European Union. We know very well that uh, Russian TV propagandists uh, threaten not only Ukraine, but also Poland, the Baltic states, Finland, Sweden, all the allies of the U.S. in Europe. And Ukraine, by fighting alone, um, in terms of, you know, bodies, our physical presence on the ground, is uh, actually putting a shield in front of uh, the allies of the U.S. in Europe. And by this, we are making the continent a safer place. If we receive the support that we need to defend and ourselves and to win this war, we will send a clear signal to uh, everyone around the globe who is now watching this war in Ukraine uh, that democracies uh, will be supported and that uh, further international conflicts are not worth pursuing. Ukraine's top war general um, raised some eyebrows when he made news in an interview a couple of weeks ago describing this war as being at a stalemate, essentially. Uh, President Zelensky uh, disputed that. But is that the sense among Ukrainians? And if so, is there concern that there may be more pressure from the West t to go to the negotiating table? Mm -hmm. um, it is a hard war to fight for us. Uh, we've been uh, pursuing uh, what is called a counteroffensive uh, to liberate our territories, which are currently occupied by Russia, without basically air support. This is not what a NATO country would be asked to do. This is not what is expected of our allies in the West. Uh, we basically persevered because we do not have another choice. Uh, there are people in the territories occupied by Russia who are suffering from the occupation regime. And when we liberate our territories, as we've done, uh, I, would, I would like to remind us that Ukraine has actually liberated more than a half of the territories that Russia occupied since the start of the full-scale invasion. When we liberate those territories, we face what um, actually cannot be forgotten. We face the mass graves of our fellow citizens. Um, I am among those who stood in front of a mass grave in the forest of Izum in the Kharkiv region where a fellow writer was buried, um, Volodymyr Vokolinko was his name. Um, and uh, after this, you understand that you do not have a choice. You must liberate all the territories. And this is the only peace guarantee that exists for Ukrainians. Uh, we understand that unless Russia is pushed back to its uh, actual internationally recognized borders, we will not have peace in Ukraine. Any ceasefire at the moment will be used by Russia to rearm and attack Ukraine, because uh, basically for them it is also an existential fight. The existence of our democracy and our fight for freedom uh, is an existential threat to Russia's authoritarian regime. 
So if we succeed, Russia will also experience um, an internal crisis, which will definitely push um, Russians to reconsider uh, their current uh, order.